Good morning and welcome to worship. If you are here on site today when you came in, you should have received your bulletin. If you're joining us online, the bulletin is available on our website or was sent out by email. Also, when you came in, you should have received your prepackaged communion elements. We will use those later during the service. If you're joining us online, you are welcome to participate in Holy Communion with us using whatever bread, wine, crackers, or grape juice you have at home. As we begin our worship today, I invite you to stand as you are able or to join in a worship position. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one, a God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven. You are made whole. God appoints the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The 
The, fir the first reading is from Exodus, the uh, 32nd chapter. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are our gods. O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt? The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it is with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Psalm 51 will read responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, and your great compassion blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak, and light in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. The second reading is from 1 Timothy, chapter 1. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and the love that are in Jesus Christ. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost, but for that very reason I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them a parable. 
Which one of you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. When he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. I have a question for everybody today. And I want to know what is one fun thing that you have done in the last week? One fun thing. Or maybe not fun. What is something that you thought was really interesting that happened last week? Jack. You welcomed kindergartners to school for the first time. That sounds like a whole lot of joy and a whole lot of hurting cats. Yeah, yeah, not wrong. <laughs> so, as you did that, Miss Jackie, did you know that you were doing God's work with your hands? And a lot of prayers went up for, yep, yep. What else? What's something else somebody did this week? Jack, what did you do? You forget. Ooh. Yeah. The big red ones? Yeah. You did all that work? Wow, all that in five minutes. That sounds like a miracle over here. Or 20, maybe 20. Mom has said an hour and five minutes. <laughs> so, you helped set up, and what is that for, do you know? What did you help set up? Yeah, so we're going to paint rocks, positivity rocks, and we're going to make dog toys for dogs in the shelter that don't have toys, right? And did you know that all of that work that you set up for yesterday was doing God's work with your hands? Did you know that? You did? Did you know that all the work that we're going to do today, making the rocks, making the dog toys, is also going to be God's work, and we're doing it with our hands? Yeah? Yeah? What else? What's one more thing somebody did this week? Nancy, what'd you do? You went to band practice? It was so much fun. Are you guys learning new music? Good, it's fun. And we love the band. The band will be back two weeks, I think it is, is our next, the end of the month the 24th. And did you know that when the band is playing, you're doing God's work with your hands, your mouth, your fingers, your toes, your everything you used to play? And I saw one more hand over here. Was there a hand? Alex, what'd you do this week? You went to your 40th reunion for high school. That is exciting. And maybe a few other emotions. What school? Was it Oakland or? Okay. And what did you do at your reunion? Because I've got a big one coming up that I don't, I don't know what we're going to do. So what, what does one do at a reunion? Okay, so you reconnected, you talked with people, maybe like had to remember what people looked like in high school. 
Okay, name tags are helpful. Did you know that you were doing God's work while you were at that reunion? Probably not aware of it. That's right. So today is called God's Work, Our Hands Sunday, and it is celebrated in every single Lutheran church around the country right now, all members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And it is a day that the ELCA has said, we are going to celebrate all of what we do that is God's work through us, using our hands, our feet, our voices, our bodies, everything that we do is a way to show others that God loves you, that God forgives you, and that God is always in this world working. So everything from setting up tables to a service project, to reconnecting with friends of old, to greeting children, to playing music, all of that is a way that we show everybody that God is at work in the world. What do you think of that? Yeah. You went to your drum class. So that means when we have Campfire Sing Along next year, we might have a drummer. Is that true? Yeah. And that's also a way that you can show God's love, right? You can play really loud. Ah, so you don't hurt mommy's ears. Ah. Well, that's awesome because everything that you do is a way to show people that God loves not only you, but that God loves everybody. So remember that no matter what you're doing, whether you're at school, you've got that bag tag, right? God's got your back. Whether you're setting up for service projects, whether you're going to the grocery store, every little chance the way to say, hey, God is right here, right now. Oh, you went, you went to the grocery store, too. Did you hold the door for somebody? That's wonderful. That's a great way to show God's love in the world. It was a ghost. So we're going to talk after church about how we can use ghosts and Halloween decorations to show God's love. What do you think? Sound good? Because I'm going to need a few minutes to think about that. <laughs> Things they don't teach you in seminary. Peace be with you. In the last year together, you may have noticed that a question I ask rather frequently is, what is your God moment this week? Or where have you seen God? I've used it in worship, I've used it in Bible study, I've used it in council, I've used it in the office with B. It's a great icebreaker question, or a great way to start a conversation, to think, where have I seen God this week, or this month, or this year? But in this question, it is an invitation to you to create an image of God based on your experience from whatever time frame, the last week, the last month, the last year. A God moment right now is a child playing in the front making vehicle noises. Because all God's children are welcome in worship. The reason that I constantly ask this question is to encourage you to find ways to see God in everything. To see everything as the divine. Every action as a God-inspired work. Because when we begin to notice this, we begin to see God in everyone, in everything. But it also helps us to learn about God, because we all see God differently. God shows up different, works different through each and every one of us. The Bible shows us God in big ways. We have a whole library of stories of the ways that God shows up in the world. But in this question of what is your God moment, where have you seen God? You are invited 
to write your own story of where and how you see God today. So I want to go through our readings because each of them showcase the different ways that God shows up in the context of that story. We see different images of God, different ways that God is showing up. And when we look at that and piece apart the stories, it can help us see God too. Gives us something to look for. And reminds us that even if we don't see God in one way, God might show up in another. So, in our first reading from Exodus, we see Moses and God talking. The Israelites, after leaving Egypt, have, as they do multiple times, turned away from God and started worshiping false idols. And understandably, God is upset and really angry. God says, Moses, these people, I just can't. And Moses says, calm down, God. It's going to be okay. And as the text said, the Lord changed his mind about the disaster he was going to bring. In this story, the God moment, the God image, how we can see God is plentiful. We can see that God gets angry with us just as we get angry with each other. But God doesn't give up on us. We also see God as a conversation partner problem-solving, saying, how do we work together, and can you please just knock it off? Instead of being a god in the sky dictating what happens, God communicates. And at every turn, God chooses relationship with the Israelites, with all people. Now, yeah, God did threaten to destroy, but he decided not to, because God holds on to God's promises. After Noah, we saw the rainbow when God made that promise in the sky to say, I will never again destroy the earth. Here we see God holding true to that promise. Moving on to our psalm, we have these familiar words to many. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. These words are sung by many, new and old, in Bible times and still today. But the thing about songs and psalms is that they are inspired by scripture, by stories, and they are based on experiences. So the way that we can see God in this text is that God is always creating. Create in me a clean heart, God. You create the world. You created me. Keep creating. We can see that God cleans us from our wrongdoings and our imperfections. Renew a right spirit within me. And we know from this text that if we put our trust and faith in God, even though we are broken and sinners, to God we are whole and perfect. Continuing to our second reading from 1 Timothy, a letter from Paul, a disciple, to Timothy, a church leader in a distant land. And the thing about Paul's letters is when he says something, it means the people are doing the opposite. So Paul, in this letter, is reminding Timothy and his church and his people, saying, even the most untrustworthy person can become a follower of God. Now, if Paul is saying this, that to me says that Timothy and that church community was saying, well, you're not good enough to be a follower, and you've done too many bad things. And Paul says, no, no, no. God's church is about including, not about separating. And so the way that we can see God in this text is that God's love is for all people, no matter what they've done. That God's forgiveness and grace extends to all people, even when we don't want to extend it to them ourselves. We can also see in this text that God does not give up on us. Even when we turn away, even when we do wrong, nothing can separate us from God. 
because even the worst can become a follower of God. We also see in this text, and we heard it also in our opening hymn, that God is immortal, invisible, timeless, beyond all comprehension. But God is always there. We can see God in all of the little moments of every day. And sometimes when we have trouble seeing God, that's why we turn to each other for help. And lastly, in our Gospel from Luke, we have two parables, the lost sheep and the lost coin. Two stories of something being lost and the owner or the person in charge, the steward, doing everything to get it back. And in these parables, we can see God in so many different ways. God shows up as a shepherd, tender, loving, caring, willing to chase us and drag us back. Around this time of year, a video always pops up on Facebook of a shepherd pulling a sheep out of a kind of crevice in the ground, and the shepherd's really yanking and pulls the sheep up and, and throws him, and I'm like, yep, that sometimes is me. And then the sheep keeps going and goes right back into the crevice a few feet down. And the shepherd walks over, does the same thing, pulling the sheep out and throwing them back. And I think what a beautiful picture of God doing that for us. When we need to be pulled back, God is always there chasing us, no matter what. But we also see in this text, God is a woman searching high and low, cleaning, trying to find what is lost, and then celebrating and rejoicing when it is found. We see in this text that God is willing to go to the ends of the earth for us, because in God's mind, we are priceless. One sheep in 99 is so important to God. One coin in 10 is worth completely turning the house over to find. Not one will be lost, because God loves all of God's creation. And the last thing we see is that God rejoices with us, in us, and for us, celebrating when we do things right, scolding us when maybe we get it wrong, and rejoicing when we commit to doing it better, to trying again, to turning back, And so all of these images in scripture today, I have a few of my own God moments, a few places that I have seen God this past week that I'll share with you. Over the last week, there have been countless phone calls and text messages between members giving health updates, prayers, and caring for one another during procedures, during sickness, showing that God's love is always with you even when you're scared. I've seen God in the ways that we have connected in person, online, and hybrid, doing both. Through Bible study with people near and far, and also through social media, with the people who follow our page who maybe are no longer members but are still seeing and engaging and want to know what's happening here at church. I saw God a lot yesterday at Synod Day down at Great Adventure with 550 other Lutherans. Lots of smiles and laughing, singing, worshiping together in multiple languages. God showed up in the midst of all of that. And I had to chuckle to myself as I'm walking around the theme park. And at every ride, there seemed to be someone screaming, Oh my God! which also might have been me once or twice. And I can't help but think in that phrase that somewhere deep down it is a cry and a prayer to God saying, I'm terrified right now. Give me peace, give me calm. You will survive the ride. I'm also reminded on this day, the anniversary of 9-11, the ways that God showed up this day all those years ago. The firefighters, the police officers, the medical personnel, the chaplains, the people praying, 
all those searching and sacrificing, trying to return what was lost, trying to clean up. Amid that grief and sadness and terror, God is there. And I also see God right here, right now, with this God's work, our hands, Sunday, as we think about the ways that we are doing God's work with our hands. There was joy and excitement in planning for this day, and I'm excited for the ways that God is going to show up in the fun and fellowship that we will be enjoying after service. Because God shows up. God goes to extraordinary lengths for you. God is reaching out to you. God is working through you. It's not always easy to see. We don't always think about everything we do being a way that God is at work. But together we can help each other look for the way that God is showing up in relationships and reconnecting at reunions. We can see the way that God is constantly creating in us, through us, in the world. We can see the ways that God is showing up in forgiveness and grace, both that we extend and that God extends to us. And we can see God showing up in unexpected places, like band practice, kindergarten classroom, a service project, and a theme park. I invite you to take time to look. Take time to not only see God around you, but to remember that you are also showing God to others. Because at the end of the day, it is God's work through our hands. So I invite you to think, where do you see God around you? And how can you help others see God too? Amen. So our next hymn may look new, but it's really not. It's a song we know quite well with really wonderful new words. And I encourage you as you sing this song today to to not just kind of read the words and sing them and just let them go, but kind of try to get them into your heart. I love the line towards the end of the last verse, gifted by grace, we respond in God's love. I pray that we all do that every day. So please join me in this song.
profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting God at work in and among us, we raise our hearts and voices in prayers for the needs of the world. For your work in the church, we give thanks. Plant and tend relationships among faith communities that in faithful listening, speech, and action, our hands work to bear fruit for the sake of all in need. God of grace, we pray. For your work in creation, we give thanks. Sustain peoples and places affected by climate change, ecological devastation, and natural disasters. Prosper the work of creation care ministries, locally and globally, that with our minds and hearts opened, our hands work to lovingly care for the earth. God of life, we pray. For your work among the nations, we give thanks. Direct leaders and paths of honest service that both their words and actions are carried out on behalf of those whom they serve. God of righteousness, we pray. For your work in places of need, we give thanks. Sustain all who are wearied by unemployment or lack of adequate food or housing, that we advocate for relief and just policy. Bring healing to all who are sick through the skillful hands and compassionate hearts of physicians, nurses, therapists, and caregivers. We pray especially for God of restoration, we pray. For your work in our neighborhoods, towns, and cities, we give thanks. Guide our common life together so that children, youth, and adults of all ages flourish. Teach us to listen attentively to our neighbors, that any new endeavors consider those who may be left out or underserved. God of wisdom, we pray. For your work in this worshiping community, we give thanks. Bless the service projects of this day and throughout the year. Foster deeper connections among those who serve and a spirit of, of a com accompaniment as we work alongside those in our community. Strengthen our faith that we trust God moving in and among us. God of love, we pray. For the work of, for your work among those who came before us, we give thanks. Remember those who have died and are held forever in your loving hands. Hold us in your presence now and always. God of heaven and earth, On this anniversary of 9-11, we remember the first time we heard the news. We recall the first time we saw those images. We remember our thoughts, our prayers, and our grief. We remember the heartbreaking stories. We remember the lives that have forever been scarred by those moments. We remember the pain. We remember the bereavement and the bitterness. And we remember that you are a God of redemption and restoration. We remember that you love the world. We remember you sent your son to bring reconciliation and salvation. We remember you came to bring peace to all. God of redemption and restoration, we pray. Hear us when we call. Receive these and all our prayers, gracious God, we pray in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may share a sign of peace with those around you.
Let us pray our offering prayer together. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make all these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. indeed holy almighty and merciful god you are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory you so loved the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life we give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation in the night in which he was betrayed our lord jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your church, now and forever. Amen. And now gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray in whatever language or translation is most familiar to us, saying, Our Father in heaven hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God the body and blood of Christ given for you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed your hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. For our ascending blessing today, in honor of God's work, our hands, we will participate in an affirmation of Christian vocation. So I invite you to read the bold parts. Siblings in Christ, both our work and our rest are in God. Will you endeavor to pattern your life on the Lord Jesus Christ in gratitude to God and in service to others, at morning and evening, at work and at play, all the days of your life? I will, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, by the power of the Spirit, you have knit us, your servants, into the one body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with favor upon us in our commitment to serve in Christ's name. Give us courage, patience, and vision and strengthen us all in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. be seated for a few announcements. As a reminder, today as God's work, our hands and we have two service projects out in the narthex. Please stick around and help. It's a great opportunity to spend some time together uh, making dog toys and painting some rocks. Uh, also, next week is rally day. So we will be having a picnic after church. Please sign up and bring something to eat. It should be a really fun day. Also, next week starts our new worship time. Worship will begin at 10 o'clock. If you show up early for worship at 9.30, you are welcome to hang out, but worship will not begin until 10 o'clock. Two other notes, um, our worship and music meeting is on the 21st. If you are interested in being involved in that, please let myself, Bob, or Council President Joan know. And three weeks from today, I'm putting the plug out early, is our pet blessing. We will. Um, have a short service just outside of the church at 1 o'clock on October 2nd. Um, all furry friends, or if you've got stuffed animals you want to bring, they're welcome to. Um, and we'll have just a little time together, and it'll be lots of fun. To a more note, this month's uh, Benevolence of the Month is putting prayers to action. We are collecting our hats, go hats gloves, and scarves. Um, sets people have been knitting. So if you've been knitting, please bring them for us. We'll be mailing them at the end of the month. We're also going to bless them before we send them so you can admire the beautiful work of all of those who've been knitting. 
Lastly, we have a rose on the altar to give thanks to God for the birth of Carly Marie, born on September 1st, and is the granddaughter of Jackie. Right? Double checking. So, we give thanks to God for new life all the time. Are there any other announcements? I see Nancy moving to... Yes, Strengthen Our Sisters Workday is September 24th. Please talk to Michelle or sign up. Nancy? Um, I just wanted to say a quick word about Rally Day next week. The sign-up sheet. You know, there's a list of food there that are suggestions. If you want to do something else, um, feel free to branch out. The list is to prevent three potato salads. <laughs> and um, also, we'll be setting up either on Saturday, if it's going to look like rain for Sunday, and if it's looking like great weather on Sunday, we'll set up Sunday morning some tables outside. Um, so please sign up to help uh, set up, too. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Jackie. Yes, um, the, uh, the retreat to Star Lake Lodge is in October. Um, there's sign up in the Narthex, so please make sure that you sign up for that. Sunday school starts next week on Rally Day. This is why I need all of you, because my brain doesn't work at this point in the service on Sundays. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, then receive this dismissal. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. You are now entering the mission field. Thanks be to God.